I think that's an interesting thing. This one piece will make 52 layers. Watch on mobile devices or the big screen. All for free. No subscription required. Download Veely now. In our country today, income inequality is getting worse and worse. Something's wrong, and people know it. Even a dog knows the difference between being stumbled over and being kicked. I've never, ever in all my years in government seen anything like this. I don't admire the Koch brothers. I'm not against people who make money, that's fine. But what they do with their money isn't fine with me. The Koch brothers, they are bound and determined to do away with government. Billionaire brothers Charles and David Koch are the poster boys for the top 1%, using their money and power to fuel the growing inequality in America. Day in and day out, we see the Kochs using their billions to purchase politicians and policy, taking a terrible toll on democracy as they knock down the middle class, stomping on poor people. The Koch boys claim to be self-made men, yeah, made by their father Fred, who made his fortune in the oil business in the Soviet Union of the 1930s. Stalin himself brought Fred Koch into the Soviet Union to build oil refineries and teach them how to be oil engineers. Fred Koch came back to the United States after taking money from the Soviet Union and used that money to start his own oil empire and accumulated millions in a short time. Fred Koch wrote screeds against the civil rights movement, saying that it was communist driven and that white children should not go to school with black children. He said it would lead to the mongrelization of the races. This is the climate that the two brothers, Charlie and David, grew up in. And then they inherited a big pile of money from Daddy Fred. And then they put that into their own organization and helped build it up to where it is now. An enterprise that so far has put over $100 billion in the two Coke boys' pockets. Coke Industries is the second largest privately held corporation in the country. They have holdings that range from oil and gas to paper products, forestry, consumer goods, plastics, and ranching. And the most important thing is not that they have wealth, it's what they're using that wealth to do, to run roughshod over the American people. Coke Industries is filthy, one of the top 15 polluters in our country, responsible for up to 300 oil spills. They paid over $100 million in fines and legal settlements, and a federal jury found that Coke Industries stole oil from American Indian lands, which their younger brother, Bill, blew the whistle on. Coke Industries has a philosophy that profits are above everything else. The Koch brothers are trying to buy America. Over the years, the Koch brothers have spent over $80 million on at least 85 organizations to serve their agenda. The Kochs have set the stage by building an ever-growing right-wing presence called Cochtopus. Through this vast network, scripts are written. We instituted a photo ID requirement for every voter. Actors are cast. Regulate CO2 under the Clean Air Act is wrong and should not be allowed to stand. And the show is played out on a national stage. But if the curtain is pulled back, we discover that the production is all under the direction morning, a lot. of the Koch brothers. $10,000 to the Pacific Legal Foundation. $20,000 to Representative Fred Upton, Chairman of the House Energy and Commerce Committee. Over $10,000 to Republican Senator Ron Johnson of Wisconsin. $9,000 to Republican Representative Paul Ryan. $35,000 to House Speaker John Boehner. $250,000 attacking the economic stimulus. Quarter of a million dollars Over on negative ads in the 2012 campaign. $23,000 Over $2 million to the Institute The Republican for Governors Association. $3.5 million on a nationwide campaign. Promoting term limit legislation. Over $1 million. 
$3.4 million dollars on the $8 million. $1.4 million. Dollars. 80% libertarian vice presidential candidate. $8.7 million. Dollars. $7.9 million. Dollars. Dollars. To start citizens. The libertarian. $14.4 million. Dollars. Dollars. 2012 election cycle, $400 million. They are interested in using the money they make to buy a political system that allows them to become dominant players in the shaping of the country. A blockbuster decision from the Supreme Court today, opening floodgates for companies to spend all the money they want attacking political candidates. In a major five to four decision, the court gave them more power to spend as much money as they want. I mean, I think this is a political game changer. It's historic. It's a grenade. The Supreme Court reversed a century of law that I believe will open the floodgates for special interests. Citizens United is a perfect example of how the Koch boys work to create a legal decision that supports their efforts. First, two of the justices on the court, Antonin Scalia and Clarence Thomas, have attended private meetings sponsored by the Kochs, providing behind-the-scenes interaction. Second, the Koch brothers help fund numerous organizations to prepare thousands of pages of legal briefs that were sent to the Supreme Court advocating unlimited corporate spending on political campaigns. And third, Ted Olson was the lead attorney representing Citizens United during final arguments in front of the Supreme Court. Today, Ted Olson represents Koch Industries' private legal cases. So now, the Kochs use the law they help to write to spend millions more in their efforts to buy the public policies they want. What the Supreme Court said to the Koch brothers, you can buy the United States government. Why would you hesitate one minute to spend a billion, two billion? That's pretty good. Senator Kay Hagan is having trouble telling time. We like your insurance plan. We want to end doctors. And their health plans canceled. Health care costs are soaring. Hundreds of families are losing access to the doctors. Their dollars are spent on food and to jobs in foreign countries. It looks like they already bought the house. The Koch brothers can buy the Senate. Then what's next? Are they going to buy a president? In terms of academic achievement, Wake County is a nationally recognized school system. Because of the good schools here, the economy has actually boomed and prospered. Are they really trying to reverse all that we've accomplished in these last 30 years? Big money is definitely trying to change people's lives here. Koch brothers are um, fabulously wealthy billionaire um, oil barons. Free enterprise, capitalism is alive and well. It does appear that the conservative think tanks and foundations are eager to move back to an earlier time in terms of the way we run schools. And they're definitely pushing an agenda to resegregating the schools, but there's also a real push towards privatization. The Koch brothers, of course, have a national libertarian agenda and they have brought it to Wake County by means of the school board elections and they want to destroy really the model of equal schools. <laughs> equal opportunity for every child. It has also sparked this protest right in front of the Wake County School Administration building. They do not like a large public school system, and they were determined to take it apart as quickly as they could. The Wake County School Board threatens to turn back the clocks to an era of segregation. We must stand up and fight back. We're on the record talking about the most significant local school board election since the 1970s. Follow the money, you can see it, it's real. The connection between the um, Koch brothers and what happened here with the Wake County School Board could probably be best traced if you look at Americans for Prosperity. My brother Charles and I provided the funds to start um, the Americans for Prosperity.
Americans for Prosperity. They were gunning for the diversity policy all along. The future of the Wake County school system is on the line. In just a few weeks, four of those school board seats are up for grabs. The Koch brothers didn't put money directly into the Wake school board elections, but indirectly, Americans for Prosperity helped the school board candidates on their agenda. It's beyond my wildest dreams how AFP has grown. It was the Americans for Prosperity and the Koch brothers. They were like in the Wizard of Oz, the Oz behind the scene, pulling levers and making things happen. I really had no idea. We worked so hard running yeah. for school board oh, yeah. and to know that our opponents were backed by these billionaires. For me, my opponent, we had forums and debates and she really pitched forced busing. The school board crossed the line was forced busing. Forced busing is absolutely a code word. It's a term busing used in the South by George Wallace. Segregation now, segregation tomorrow, and segregation forever. The voters in Wake County and North Carolina have rejected uh, a forced busing policy. We are winning the battle against forced busing. My opponent, he just mainly talked about, he stressed neighborhood schools. Neighborhood schools, neighborhood schools, neighborhood schools. Neighborhood schools means we have our own schools and the blacks have theirs. And we heard loud and clear across this county, people wanted to go to a neighborhood schools model. We should have our right to choose our our own neighborhood, our own neighborhood schools. He didn't talk about student achievement and helping all our schools get better. There are always ways to improve the education of our students. We went to a gunfight with knives. The heated race is over. Justice! What do we want now? And don't make any mistake about it. Your plan that you're putting forth today will resegregate the schools. We had no idea what the stakes were. In one election, they now have the majority needed to change the way students are assigned to school. A big shakeup on the Wake County School Board could now impact tens of thousands of local families. People have not really taken the time to listen to the students who are actually in these programs. We met before sixth grade and we were in the dance ensemble together. We consider each other twin sisters. <laughs> if it hadn't been for the diverse school system, I don't think we really would have had a chance to become such close friends. This pretty much describes my education since kindergarten. This is diversity. When you walk in our classroom and you see the different types of students and the different people, this picture really does represent what it actually is. Moses, come on, it's time to get up. Let's get started. Robert, let's go. Y'all come on and let's go, we gotta get ready. We want to make sure that they get the best education that public money can buy. Well, oh, there you go. One down. With that idea, we've been able to make sure that they are receiving advanced classes. The school board has started the process of phasing out the busing for diversity policy. They're moving so quickly with what they want to do. We're not going anywhere! It happens so fast and they're going to continue. The more they have in power, they're going to change the rules, the laws, whatever they can. I think you'll find that the student voice has kind of been lost through this whole process. Let's go! The Koch brothers and uh, America for uh, uh, Prosperity and that ideology is very simple. What they're actually trying to do is dismantle the whole public school system. If this policy goes to the schools will become segregated. Uh, I don't believe the courses, they will not have opportunities to take the advanced courses. That's critical that they have opportunities, resources, so that they can become a productive citizen. There would be enormous impacts on the schools, especially in the urban parts of the county. So you'd have an enormous concentration of poverty in that school. And with it comes all the related social problems. People aren't going to want to teach at that school, and suddenly education in that school is going to suffer. It worries me about my sons because we had a game plan. We did not think we were going to have to change. Do you have your agenda so you can see what your assignment is? If we don't get ready, it's going to be even rougher, nastier than what it is.
fact, I am a part of the first group of students moved. I strongly feel that it's racism. I strongly feel that it's segregation. And it was all by surprise, all on short notice. I lost my communication with the teachers, relationships with the students. I'm just disconnected right now. The school board's decision to do segregation has really made it difficult for students like me to adjust and kind of grow. What happened here really woke people up. Battle lines are drawn for the issue of diversity in the Wake County schools. There was a tremendous outcry over what the school board was doing and tremendous resistance to moving backwards. People got really riled up and pushed back hard. There were enormous protests at the school board meetings. People were arrested. We're heading down a rabbit hole, and we're getting so far down that rabbit hole, there's not going to be a way to get out of it. The local NAACP filed a civil rights complaint with the federal government. Fight we will for the future of our children. They also filed a complaint with the accreditation agency. We don't want to be left out of this decision because we're the ones going to school. Breaking news on this election night in the Triangle, a shift in power for the Wake County School Board. A shift in the balance of power, the conservative majority no more. We're likely going to see a lot of changes. Big changes. The conservative takeover is over. This election was a rejection of the brand of politics that the Koch brothers stand for. The celebration continues. Koch brothers, Americans for Prosperity, they brought in Tony Tata. Superintendent Tata was fired. To the Koch brothers, why don't you just leave? Leave us alone. Leave our children alone. As far as the school board in Wake County is concerned, the, the Koch brothers they are an unpleasant memory. They failed. Things have calmed down. We have the school system back that we were always proud of. But they've moved on. They've set their sights now on taking over state government, which they've done. They've taken control of the state legislature. They elected governor in 2012 with a lot more money and much more openly since Citizens United so the Koch brothers are not history in, in North Carolina. They're very much present. We're still at war. The Koch brothers have been very clever at designing their grant agreements with universities in such a way that they will exercise maximal control and influence on campus. Many of these grants come with very significant strings attached. They have very clear stipulations that give the Koch brothers excessive control over various aspects of the university's internal affairs. A school that I take so much pride in and that I believe in had effectively sold its soul to the Koch brothers for a few million dollars. Their help setting up a pattern where universities are expected to give up their values in exchange for money programs that they start tend to be one point of view only. They now have financial agreements with over 150 colleges and universities. They've spent tens of millions of dollars to get their point of view instilled in classrooms, amongst faculty members, and in students. The size and scope of these deals is quite significant. Thousands of students pass through those programs every year. And in, over time, hundreds of thousands of students are directly exposed to Koch brothers' ideology and political points of view. The university signs a contract that says they will hire someone who shares the point of view of the Koch brothers. They have an immense amount of influence over who those professors are and what they teach and what they publish and what research they do and what they say in the classroom. We depend on universities to provide a kind of knowledge that is not owned or bought or sold. Since the Renaissance, we've 
had academics who do research independently and we learn as a society from them. What the Koch brothers have done is strip that segment of society in a way so as to promote their own ideological agenda. This is a major threat to the country. The Catholic University of America, founded to serve this purpose, to be the National University of the Catholic Church, Almost immediately after the million dollar contribution, there were protests about the Koch's undue influence on the staff and faculty. Fifty prominent Catholic educators signed a petition calling for the university to refuse the money, saying the Koch's philosophy directly contradicted Catholic teaching. But the Koch brothers continued to contribute with strings attached to colleges and universities. This is, a, this is a major threat to our way of life. They are trying to use their money to influence the flow of American democracy. Billionaire industrialist and my future face twin, Charles Koch. <laughs> In an interview with the Wichita Eagle, the cute Coke said he wants to eliminate the minimum wage because it creates a culture of dependency. I'm living off of minimum wage. And a big hug, big hug. It's really hard getting by. I, if I live on, my house is through Section 8, but um, I can't afford to find anything extra or anything better. It's, it's really hard trying to get by. I think the fact that the Koch brothers are trying to take away minimum wage is ridiculous. I'm just filling out the forms that well, my public assistance they require in order to get assistance with anything. If minimum wage was just raised a dollar or two, I wouldn't need public assistance. Thirteen million a day uh, sounds wonderful, and I couldn't imagine anybody making that much even being concerned with somebody making minimum wage. It just doesn't make sense to me how they could even consider taking it away or lowering it. If anything, I think they'd be giving back and, and helping us. When you share together, the fun just never ends. The end. Well, I'm recycling uh, our cans and our bottles. Sometimes we don't have enough money at the end of the month, but it makes me feel like what I'm doing at work isn't enough. I'm just a step closer to being homeless. It really angers me that billionaires um, like the Koch brothers have the audacity to create laws and and, um, and, and fight certain laws that, that determine the way I provide for my family. We're not asking for a wage to live upon, we're asking for a wage to get by Right on. now, I'm just making 825 an hour, which is not enough. It's um, very difficult for me. Why would the Cook Brothers want to take that minimum wage away from me? if I barely make enough money to live in. I struggle with, you know, providing daycare, childcare. Sí, a mí me gustaría ver a los hermanos Coach caminar una milla en mis zapatos. When I see about the Koch brothers' homes, I believe you don't need that many houses I'm that big for something like, probably my apartment is as big as one of their bathrooms. I'm just trying to provide for my family. That's, that's it. Sí, el salario mínimo, con el salario mínimo tú vives al día. 
y de este, aparte de que vives al día, siempre estás endeudada. The Koch brothers, they're doing wrong by, uh, you know, that's, that's a great sin, is greed. I have been fighting all year to stamp out voter fraud. Because if even one fraudster shows up at the polls in November, that would tarnish the integrity of an election that the Koch brothers paid good money for. <laughs> will now be required to show an ID at the poll. A suppression tactic to undermine the right The to impact vote. will be felt most heavily among the poor, the elderly, minorities. They hit students extra hard. Now push to make it as difficult as possible to it vote. It disenfranchises a whole sector of the American electorate. The Koch brothers are behind these kinds of laws because they want to cut off the participation of people who are not behind their corporate agenda. The people most impacted by these new voter suppression tactics are African Americans, Latinos, elderly, young voters, and those with disabilities. There are three ways the Koch brothers are working to suppress the vote. Number one, ALEC. ALEC stands for the American Legislative Exchange Council. This is an establishment that brings high-powered organizations like Koch companies, the NRA, and ExxonMobil together with politicians for the express purpose of creating legislation that favor the corporations that fund ALEC. ALEC supervises and guides the writing of the legislation. Once they have the language of the legislation, they work tirelessly to get the bill introduced into as many states and counties as possible. Using the ALEC money and connections, one bill fits all. Number two, Americans for Prosperity and True the Vote. Hoke funded Americans for Prosperity supports a number of voter suppression groups in campaigns across the country. One of the largest and most vocal is called True the Vote. True the Vote has enlisted and trained an army of citizen volunteers. They are planning to station one million poll watchers across the country on election day. True the Vote is the first line of defense uh, for free and fair elections. True the Vote opened my eyes to a problem that has been left unaddressed. True the Vote is a citizen-led effort to ensure free and fair elections. The problem, critics say, is that those poll watchers are mostly white, and many of the polling places they will target are mostly black. They're trying to find any and everything to stop the citizens from voting. And number three, politicians. Protecting the integrity of each and every vote cast in the state. This voter ID bill, including Voter ID. Voter ID. Common sense voter ID law. Get those IDs in people's hands. Photo ID requirement for every voter. These kinds of efforts are reminiscent of a much darker period in American history, when there were efforts to prohibit people from voting, particularly in the segregated South. This is the resurrection of those voter suppression efforts, and there certainly hasn't been this kind of money or this kind of organization behind them in a very long time. First it's Kennedy, that's when I started voting. And then from then on I've always voted. I'm gonna miss this one though because I don't have nothing to, no, I don't have any ID. I, somebody stole my pocketbook. Her purse was stolen eight years ago along with her birth certificate and she says she can't get an ID. It's just such a kick in the teeth to old people particularly who have been voting as long as, or darn near as long as I have. There is a glitch on my birth certificate. I did register almost immediately upon my 21st birthday. That was 59 years ago. I have voted in every single election since then. I would have considerable difficulty getting a state-issued ID, and I would like to continue voting. I think it's my right. They told me at the uh, voter registration office I had to bring in proof of my disability check, proof of my social security check, and proof of my uh, handicap ID card. Why did I have to bring this? I never needed it before. The notion that we need this to prevent voter fraud isn't a good faith mistake, it's a lie. It is a way of disenfranchisement 
of certain segments of our society. This is a poll tax. This is requiring people to pay money to cast a ballot. And I don't think we want that in this country. Born at home in the segregated South, she's never had a birth certificate. My grandmother, she insisted never, never miss a voting day. I won't have no rights if I can't vote. 93-year-old Viviette Applewhite is the lead plaintiff in the ACLU's case over the voter ID law. I think it's a terrible law to make people not be able to vote because they don't have a piece of paper say ID on it. January 2014, a judge ruled that the Pennsylvania voter ID law is unconstitutional, which means that Viviette Applewhite is eligible to vote. Be able to vote. This is all I want to do, is be able to vote. The brothers and their allies are going to spend millions of dollars in these efforts. Citizens who believe in voting and democracy must fight back in all possible ways. Viviette Applewhite was able to hold on to her long-held right to vote because she fought back against the Koch brothers' suppression laws. Joy Lieberman in Missouri also took the issue to court and won. Alberta Curry preserved her record of voting rights of over 50 years because she refused to let her rights be stolen by the bogus voter ID laws backed by the Koch brothers. The reason that you target somebody's voting rights is it makes it easier to take away the rest of their rights. You come for that first and the whole house of cards starts to fall. Why is voting important to me? because it gives you equal right to do things. That's why it's important. Really what we would like to see is to take the unions out at the knees so they don't have the resources to fight these battles. This is a coordinated effort where you have ALEC and Americans for Prosperity, the Koch brothers and their allies spending millions and millions and millions of dollars to fight unions and to take this country backwards. The Koch brothers want to eliminate the ability for working folk to have power at either the ballot box or the bargaining table, so they try to eliminate trade unions. The Koch brothers not only want to destroy unions, but they want to destroy the lives of working people across this country. They do not want to have safety regulations. They do not want workers to be able to negotiate wages and benefits. They're attacking unions because they know that we stand in their, in their way and that we're going to continue to stand in their way and that's why they're coming after us in state after state after state. There have been reports that the Koch brothers are exceeding the spending of the 10 most politically active unions. They are behind introducing legislation which rob public sector workers of collective bargaining right to work initiatives where they are trying to convince folks that it's better to live in a union free environment. What they've done is they've hurt a lot of working people who used to have decent wages who no longer have decent wages. The legislation says we shouldn't allow unelected bureaucrats to that dictate workers should have the right policy. to decide whether they want to be part of a union or not. Forcing workers to pay union dues. To not have to pay union dues in order to get a job. People have to join a union in order to get employed. To choose whether or not to join a union. Groundswell of support uh, for right to work. Union bosses run a well greased like And raising employers' labor costs. The labor movement is one of the most important voices for justice in this country. Unions take away your right to choose where your money goes. Being middle class nowadays means we have to work harder more hours for less pay. Kids, you can be the union boss. Spend forced dues on politicians and eliminate the right to vote. The only way that you're going to be able to exercise power, it would be through collective action. Workers rights! Workers rights! And now we turn to that showdown raging in the heartland. Thousands of union members taking to the streets. When the Koch brothers put all that money into Michigan here, they financed this thing. We are one! We are one! Union members from all across the Commonwealth have gathered here in Harrisburg. These workers see it as union destruction. The people who've been making all the money, they want what little we have left. Right to work is wrong! We want to take care of our children the way a working family is supposed to. 
destroying what we have done and busting unions, and that is not right. Out of state billionaires just trying to damage the working working people, and it's ridiculous. We need to shine a light on who the Koch brothers are and what their motives are. This threat is real. These folks are trying to buy our country, and we can't let that happen. What the Koch brothers want to do is destroy Social Security because Social Security is a federal government program that has been enormously successful. The Koch brothers are funding think tanks and other organizations which are spreading an enormous amount of disinformation about Social Security. Raising the age of retirement is to ask people who are banging nails or waitresses or so many blue collar jobs out there that you gotta keep working until you're 70 years of age. That's just really unfair. Second of all, we wanna give the younger generation an opportunity to get out into the workforce. The Koch brothers fund organizations and you have economists uh, and political scientists working there and they are very, very good in getting on television. Raising the retirement age. I would um, increase the uh, retirement age. So you would probably have to increase the retirement age. We're probably going to have to raise the retirement age. <laughs> and people will not know they represent an organization which is heavily funded by corporate interests. They are very effective in getting their positions out into the media. Should Congress raise the retirement age? If you raise the retirement age. Well, raise the retirement age. Let's consider the options. Let's raise the age. Raising the retirement age to 69. At the same time, the Koch brothers are putting huge amounts of money into campaign contributions. Very modest increases in the retirement age. And eventually getting the retirement age to 70 is, is a step that needs to be taken. The age on Social Security will have to go up. So you have an echo chamber which starts uh, repeating a lot of misinformation. The Koch brothers are funding study after study which suggests to people that Social Security is going bankrupt. Social Security is not going broke. Social Security has a $2.6 trillion surplus. The program is actuarially bankrupt. Social Security and Medicare, they are going to go broke. The real risk is Social Security running out of money. Social Security going bankrupt. Social Security already bankrupt. Social Security is going bankrupt. The system will be bankrupt. Bankrupt federal programs like Social Security. Social Security is going bankrupt. Social Security is already going bankrupt. The Koch brothers want to privatize Social Security to invest your retirement funds on Wall Street. And you may lose all of your retirement savings when you get old. Real security is based on personal accounts with real assets. I like the idea of personal accounts. The option of investing one third of their Social Security payroll taxes into personal retirement accounts. The Koch brothers' job is to do everything they can to dismember government in general. And if you could destroy Social Security, you will have gone a long way forward in that effort. The Koch brothers are, are big oil personified um, and they're carbon barons. They make most of their money running pipelines around the continent. This proposed Keystone Pipeline is a 1,700 mile fuse to the biggest carbon bomb on the continent. It is going to take the dirtiest energy, the so-called tar sands, and bring them down to the United States. The uh, Koch brothers, they'll have access to this unbelievable pool of carbon and hence money. There are trillions of dollars worth of oil up there. Any spill means that the dirtiest, nastiest fuel on Earth will be poured all over our country.
Over 10,000 protesters surrounded the White House Sunday calling on President Obama to reject the proposed Keystone XL tar sands oil pipeline. And we say tar sands, you say shut down, tar sands! Shut down! Tar sands! Shut down! Yeah. We're never going to have enough money to compete with the Koch brothers. We're going to have to find other currencies to use. And sometimes it's our bodies. Over two weeks in Washington, 1,253 people got arrested. That was the largest civil disobedience action in about 30 years in this country. I myself was arrested on the first day of this protest and spent the next three days um, in the central cell block in D.C. We played the game as hard as we could, making it clear to President Obama that there were people all over the country really deeply concerned about this. And in the end, that was enough to outweigh the uh, financial power of the Koch brothers and the rest of the oil industry. President Obama making an unexpected decision on the Keystone oil pipeline. And the president uh, announcing they were going to hold off on a final decision for at least a year. The Obama administration said today it is putting off a decision on whether to approve the Keystone pipeline. The Koch brothers will scrape the bottom of the barrel uh, with the tar sands. Uh, that is the dirtiest fuel on the planet. There's no limit to the number of communities and families they will hurt to make their money off dirty energy. Something is wrong on this street, Penn Road, where I live. Something is wrong here in this community. It's killing people, just like it killed my daughter. I live on Penn Road. People call me Mr. Bowie because I'm a minister. I pastor a church for 22 years in this area. I'm a reserve deputy sheriff, and I'm a senior citizen. This house is Mr. Walfield Gibbs. His wife, Bobby Sue Gibbs, passed away with multi cancers a few years ago. I have to do this three to four times a day. This house here belongs to Mr. George Parker and it's Mr. Ollie Parker. Both of them was taken out by cancer. My husband died of lung cancer and I am having breathing problems. Mr. Tom Perkins and his wife they live here. Mr. Tom Perkins is deceased now. He had multiple cancers. We have 15 homes in this area and maybe 11 people has died or more with cancer. And that's unreal. What's going on here is a crime. Oh, it's just a waste. My daughter Letitia died at 43. She grew up in the neighborhood. She had a husband, a devoted husband. She had children that she really and truly loved. And I think that she died too young. She was a non-smoker. She, she was not a drinker. And she got lung cancer. And you know, you'll wonder where, where did it come from? These people are sick. They're dying. This is inexcusable. <coughs> That's murderous. Good to see you again. When I met Mr. Bowie, I could not believe what was going on in this neighborhood. I think it has to do with our environment, what we smell, what we inhale. We were deer hunting in the back, and we noticed that there was such a strong, strong odor back there. <coughs> the smell was so strong and so bad. It was awful. They have cut this huge channel, and it's like an open sewer line. Okay. This is where the smell is coming from. <coughs> you can see the steam coming from the stuff. And at times it gets so bad, it's like a big cloud. And it, it gets up in the warm air and it flows right over the trees where our property is. It causes the throat to be sore, eyes to hurt, nose, and, and it's hard to breathe in. The first time that I came here, I saw the color of the water. It was like an epiphany. This right here. It's private property, but if you could follow it in a straight line, you would be at Georgia Pacific's plant owned by Coke Industries. It's pitiful that Coke allowed this kind of a stuff to be dumped, just dumped. Once I saw this, I knew Coke Industries were the culprits. 
They know that these people are sick. Coke Industries, George Pacific, they employ thousands of people here in Crossit. And it's hard to come up against a company that employs so many people. The neighborhood of Penn Row is at ground zero. Right through these woods are these ditches carrying these various types of pollutions from the Georgia Pacific plant. And that industrial process includes the use and discharges to the air and to the, and to the water of a lot of nasty chemicals. The Georgia Pacific complex in West Cross releases millions of gallons a day of wastewater into a whole series of ditches. One might characterize these exposures as a ticking time bomb to the people's health that are breathing the air that's flowing from these open ditches. It's such a hard battle that these people have here. They don't have money, and their state representatives are all influenced by the Koch brothers and this whole system they have put together to be able to do whatever they want to. The Senate will come to order. Koch Brothers' direct contributions has been an investment well worth it. It's certainly a lot less expensive than actually having to retrofit factories. The EPA will have doors locked and the lights turned off. Koch Industries not only manipulates the political process, but more importantly to me, is they manipulate the public into believing that the EPA is killing jobs. The EPA is intent on taking matters into their own hands which will result in a bleeding of jobs. It is a problem when politicians are calling EPA and saying, leave them alone, rather than calling them and saying, do your job and clean it up. This bill is about protecting jobs. 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 What they've tried to do is just shut down this machine called America. Coke is using natural strings to transport waste, and this is not allowed by the Clean Water Act. And they can do it because EPA lets them do it. Coke Industries are repeat offenders of environmental crimes. Coke Industries is one of the primary sources of pollution in the United States. They have a history of serious and even criminal pollution problems. Coke Industries subsidiaries have paid millions in environmental fines. The Koch brothers are trying to stop the government from limiting greenhouse gas emissions. Government regulators have fined Koch Industries and its subsidiaries tens of millions for oil spills and pollution over the years. In 2000, a federal grand jury returned a 97 count indictment against Koch Industries in Corpus Christi, Texas. They were charged not only with emitting more benzene than they were allowed to, they tried to cover it up. Benzene is a known human carcinogen. People that are breathing benzene have increased risk of developing cancer. And that's known. It's not suspected. It is known. But the Bush administration worked with Coke to come up with a plea bargain. So it went from 97 count indictment to one count, the potential of $350 million to just $20 million fine. As an environmental criminologist, watching this case evolve makes me sick. They know they can get away with it. They'll just wait and be fine if they ever get caught, which in most cases they won't ever be caught because the EPA is understaffed and underfunded. The Koch brothers care more for the income than they do their neighbors, and people are constantly dying. It's just called cheap and not caring about people or rivers or the environment or anyone but their bottom line. David Koch, he can stop this, just as he donates millions of dollars to try to find a cure for cancer. It began 16 years ago when I discovered that I had prostate cancer and that I had not long to live. What kind of man is David if, if he has cancer and put all his money into research and, and then he's dumping in our backyard? Today my cancer is very much under control and my doctor advises me that I have many more years to live. He was able to buy good medicine, to see the best doctors. The fact that this magnificent research facility has been named after me is probably the greatest honor I've ever been awarded. With David Koch knowing that he has been right there where we, the people of this community, are now. And when you look around you and see people dying every day, then that's shocking to us. I've lived here for 39 years. My husband died of lung cancer, and I am having breathing problems, and I feel that I might eventually have lung problems.
the Koch brothers. I'm reaching out, hoping and asking them to fix this problem because we, we need help here. In the Old West, they called it being outgunned. They're outgunned by the Koch brothers. <coughs> so I feel like their only hope is to make people realize what's happening here. If I could talk to Koch brothers face to face, I just really believe I'm dying now. You know, just a slow death what it is. The Koch brothers are killing me and my family. I feel that George Pacific and Coke is responsible for my daughter's death. This is inexcusable, and something's got to be done about it. <coughs>Once we expose the wealthy and powerful individuals that seek to game our political system, that's where citizens get to step into the process. We get to say, no more. Bad enough that we have to fight the Koch brothers in terms of what they're doing to our planet. We shouldn't have to fight with them also about what they're doing to our democracy. Stop the Koch brothers! The big losers are those that don't have the resources being deployed by Koch. At the end of the day, this is a battle of wills. It's a battle between the Koch brothers' very organized money and people we can change our politics. It won't be easy. It wasn't easy to take on the robber barons 100 years ago. Once we expose Hope Brothers, that unlocks the door. People can beat money, but only if we decide to link up and to work. Money in our political process produces undue influence, absolutely. We're not going to be bought and paid for by the Koch Brothers. Hi, this is Jim Miller from Brave New Films. I'm producing a documentary about the Koch brothers and wanted to speak with David Koch about it. Koch Industries, how may I direct your call? Hi there, my name is Jordan. I'm calling from Brave New Films. We're working on a documentary about the Koch brothers. May I speak to David Koch, please? Okay, um, do you think you could hold on for just a moment? Certainly. Thanks. Um, I wanted to see if I could talk to Charles Koch today to get a response about some of the issues we raised. Just hoping I could get in touch with somebody or to Charles Cook directly to see if we can get their comment on a couple of things we raised in the film. Uh, he's unavailable. You know, I'm not allowed to do that, no. Uh, One moment, please. Let me, uh, let me connect you, uh, with, let me put you on hold and see if this lady is available. One moment, please. Okay. <laughs> He doesn't do voicemail. I could take a message. Sure. Um, I just wanted to ask some questions. Okay. Oh, are you the person I should speak to? No. Um, and the person you need to speak with is um, is not available. Mr. Cook's office. Hi, this is Jim Miller from Brave New Films. I'm producing a documentary about the Koch brothers and wanted to speak with uh, Mr. David Koch about some of the questions that we have. He's not available. Can I leave a message? Sure. Well, um, could I ask you to send an email with all the information and in your inquiry to info at coke.com? I'm sure I'd be happy to do that. I'd also be really happy with a voicemail. Um, we'll start with an email. Okay. Well, I can almost assure you that you won't receive a call today. Um, I would be surprised. Why would he hide the money he's spending? if he's proud of what he's doing. Why he is attacking Social Security when it's essential to so many of our seniors. My next question uh -huh. is, why do you think it's right for billionaires to fight against raising minimum wage? So the director of the film, his name is Robert Greenwald, and he would love to talk to somebody. Greenwald? Yes, Robert Greenwald. OK. And then also why, as a billionaire, he's fighting against raising the minimum wage. How does he continue to pollute people's neighborhoods around his factories? And how he justifies taking away people's basic rights to vote. Okay, well, I just want to make sure that, that we can get some answers. We're going to go public next week, and um, I want him to really have a chance to talk to us. We'd like to send him the documentary that we're working on. Is that okay? Can I have an address? Jim Miller, Brave New Films. I heard you the first time. Thank you. Have a good day. 
He's unavailable because he's not here. He's out of the country. And I look forward to talking with him. I would encourage you to send an email. So I am not going to be able to provide you with any answers today. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you.